yes, it's the Hardcore Marketing Show. I am Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. And today's show, sponsored, wow, by Cheshire Impact on a mission to help you do what? Maximize your use of marketing automation and CRM. CheshireImpact.com. Bam. And my guest today, my guest, he is a world-class sales wizard, trainer, expert guru. He, now, simple, let's simplify. What is he? He trains salespeople for growing companies like Salesforce, LinkedIn, Marketo, and a thousand more. And I've personally been on calls with probably 150 plus of the students that have trained under him and watched firsthand as people crushed it on these calls, but in a way that was actually good for the customer and for the rep, it's been amazing. He also presents at Dreamforce. He's held sales positions, need I say no more, he's held sales positions all the way from the inside sales, the cold caller, all the way up to sales management and now owning a consulting company. Man, ladies and gentlemen, John Barrows, how are you, sir? <laughs> Fantastic, Casey. I uh, appreciate the intro. I don't know if I deserve that much praise, but uh, you know, I appreciate you do, it. But it almost wore me out, man. I'm, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know how much more I could say about you. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, me too. So the theme is, you know, and, and you'd appreciate this because I know you like to map out the process, you know, especially when you're working with sales teams. Um, January, February, each month was a different theme. We created a a roadmap for people when they're for marketers when they're doing marketing automation because we found a lot of people were just getting a tool and mm -hmm. just using it like MailChimp, just blasting people. And that doesn't work. And and so we're like, oh, what's missing a roadmap? So we made this roadmap and then each month we talked <laughs> about a different step. At the very beginning was getting to know your buyer, things like personas and really understanding them. And then each month has progressed tracking and all these things. Finally now after building drips and gated content, now it's time to really align with our sales team. And so that's what we're talking about this month. And so it's an honor to have you here. And I just want to, I want to pass you Thor's hammer and see if there's any <laughs> myths. There's right away. You just want to smash bogus strategies. Maybe that you've been hearing marketing and sales do, or any kind of misconceptions. You just want to like set the record straight right up front. Yeah. I mean, I think um, <clears throat> a couple of them that I think align with both. One is that, that sales, you either have it or you don't, and sales is an art form. Uh, I think that perception to me is, is total bullshit because I think sales is way more of a science than an art if done right. It's obviously a combination, um, but the science lays the foundation for the art, for, uh, art form to be that much more effective. And the science is actually what can help us align with marketing if we do it right. Um, Right. Just flying by the seat of your pants, like being, being an artist, you have no idea what's happening. I mean, one time I was on a sales call and I, I was, I haven't been, hadn't been trained. So I just, I was talking to this guy who's really gruff and abrupt and all like sticking it to people on the call. And all he did was piss me off. So I started doing it back at him. And then all of a sudden he started liking me. And I, it wasn't until after the call when someone who was a sales guy and I was like, what happened there? And he shared, well, you were basically, you know, you were, giving him more of the energy that he, he were kind of mirroring him and he yep. liked it. And, but I didn't know I was, I was just kind of lost in the art and yeah. that, to your point, that doesn't work. No, I mean, it does. And I think that you have to obviously have the ability to communicate and, and be able to take all this stuff, but yeah. you know, that science, that structure, that preparation and that process allows the art form to be more effective and repeatable. I think that's the problem, right? Is like, if you're a pure artist, art is such a subjective thing that, um, you know, the, as an example, the best sales reps usually get promoted to be managers. And that's a bad, that's usually the bad, a bad mix there because right. the best sales reps usually can't really articulate or share with people how they do what they do because they just do it. Right. 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 And that, but that's such a small percentage of the population, whereas the rest of us, me included, have to work our ass off in sales. And so that structure allows me to have that better conversation, that preparation. So that, that's one of them that I definitely, and, and by the way, I think it also dovetails into why sales hasn't been an educated profession in the sense that we are just getting to the point right now where sales is starting to become a major, right? You can go to school, you can get your degree in sales. There's about, there's four, there's over 4,000 colleges in America. You can get your degree in sales, about 70 of them right now. Huh, okay. And you know, I got my degree in marketing because I didn't know really? what I wanted. Yeah. I mean, I, when I went That's to school, cool. I, well, my first degree was, was, uh, was art. <laughs> realized very quickly I wasn't going to make any money there. Um, and I got into marketing because I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. 
And, you know, I figured this was the best way to combine my talents. Uh, if there was a major of sales, I didn't even know that was a thing, you know? And so as I got into sales, it, it, it kind of started to uh, really, you know, help me understand that I think the perception is you either have to have it or you don't. And that's why people have kind of thrown up their hands about sales. Well, it's a sales guy, you know, yeah. and uh, what can we do about it? But, but now that you're starting to see the science and the structure put in place for it, now you're starting to see people be able to train it, teach it and, and, and put a process around it. So now I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm encouraged by where the field of sales is actually headed. I like it, man. Science more than the art, you know, yep. respecting both, but giving structure and order to that chaos. Awesome. The artwork is smashed, not just art. Yeah. Awesome. What, no else, what, else, what else do you see that just drives you crazy that you just want to smash? That uh, technology is not the answer uh, to fix sales and marketing alignment. That, you know, yeah. everybody's looking for this tool and a technology to, to solve the problem between sales and marketing alignment. And there is, there are tools obviously that help, but without the people element of this, without the actual inter interaction between sales and marketing and having a better understanding of where each come from, no tool, no technology is going to solve that problem. Um, and, and too many people are throwing in, you're right in the mix of it as far as like, like the tech stack, if you will, it's like, what's driving me crazy right now is that all these sales efficiency tools, which are supposed to be sales efficiency tools, the sales loss, <laughs> the outreaches, the, the yes, where's the tout apps, the whatever's they're all being used as sales automation tools. And there's no difference, in my opinion, of a sales rep cranking out a bunch of template emails using a sales loft cadence or something like that, yeah. and a marketer using Marketo Eloqua Pardot to do the same fucking thing. I don't understand why people are doing that. That blurs the line. And, and then, uh, well, I think one of the things that you brought up even before we get to the automation thing, because I think that's a big problem too, is, yep. is that, that silver bullet of let's just buy a tool and it'll solve our problem. If you're yeah. having issues, your marketer having issues with the, your sales leader your sales team or they're having issues with you buying more things uh there, there's another there's something else go, there's like it's typically process it's that conversation you probably focus on the wrong metrics yep. you know, maybe marketing is focused on leads and sales is looking at revenue and closed deals and I mean, if you're talking two different languages man you'll just it doesn't matter what you're buying at that point so you there's some other work that has to be done that's so yeah. true and it's funny because, you know, I, a little while ago when the CRO position really started to hit, right? Then, you know, probably five, six, seven, eight years ago, yeah. you know, you started to see a CRO and I was like, interesting. And what I've realized is, or at least my opinion on this is the reason the CRO uh, position came to, came to exist is because sales and marketing couldn't get along. <laughs> right. Right. Cause you got the VP of sales sitting there, rah, 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 marketing sucks. And you know, we got to do our thing in marketing, the CMO being like, why aren't you following up with our leads and da, 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 da. And the CEO going, dude, I, I don't have time for this shit. You guys <laughs> I don't even know what you're stuff. talking about. Yeah. So, you know what? Screw it. We're going to hire a CRO and they're going to be the daddy or mommy. And they're going <laughs> to make the kids play well together because now, cause it, that's what it really is about. It's about revenue. Forget about leads, forget about SQLs and MQLs. It's about qualified opportunities in the pipeline that generate revenue for the business right. and, add, and obviously add value to the client. You know, for a second, when you were saying that, I was wondering if just making that position kind of passes the buck a little bit. CEOs, like, like one person's talking in lead languages. Yep. Apparently we had 800,000 impressions last month that I, that's supposed to be good. And yeah. he's saying that sales is fault. And sales is like, we close X number of deals. He's like, well, I don't know what's going on. So he's like, Hey, I know I'll get a CRO that can yep. sort this out and just clarify into one thing for me, which is revenue. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. Crazy. So that second thing you brought up because yep. you're just punching holes and stuff left and right is around the over automation. The idea that um, it, it sounds like sales and marketing can be guilty of this. We, oh. can, we can take our shiny new tool and then we can say, Hey, let's create drips and let's create all these different things. Um, and it, we can do it too much. Like, what are you seeing? How are you seeing on the sales side, market side? What are people doing? Yeah, so it's funny because when marketing automation and content marketing really started hitting the scene 10 years ago, give or take, you know, it was funny because marketing got real excited about this shit. And so do businesses because it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, look at this, right? And we can drive inbound way more. Like we don't have to just, you know, dial for dollars anymore. We can SEO and do all this other stuff. And it was like, and then, and then it was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
And it's this huge throw up all over the place of all this content marketing to drive this lead. And then, you know, impressions and all this other stuff, yep. scored stuff here or there. Um, then what's funny to me is it's kind of, it, it's now level setting a little bit on the marketing side of the house. And, but sales is taking over, but let's talk about the, the level set on marketing. You know, this whole account-based marketing shit. Um, <laughs> so look, I, I like it. I, I appreciate it. It's I everywhere right now. It's everywhere, but it's just a new fucking acronym. Apparently, I got to come up with a new acronym because, to be a millionaire because <laughs> what's old is new again as long as it has a new acronym on it. So account-based marketing, is, to me, again, is the realization from marketing that we just got to stop spamming people. Right. Like it's it's kind of like, whoops, we went a little too far on the blast out, holy shit, here's all our stuff. Right. And we got to ratchet it back a little bit to be more targeted. Hey, genius, right? But then, but now, now that marketing is coming to that realization, right, of, of that, sales is actually on the upswing of almost the exact same trajectory. So, oh, interesting. Right? So all these tools are coming out for sales reps to be more effective and they're getting these tools and they're like, yeah, yay, look at me. And, and now I can do with, with uh, tools like Connect and Sell and, and InsideSales.com and those type of things. They can make 150 dials a day right. or we can send out 700 cadences and you, whoa, 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 whoa. Like you're just flooding the marketplace with more noise. And so there's going to be a reckoning there. It's already coming. And yep. what's coming is artificial intelligence. And, and that's really where, you know, these tools are headed. We're in this weird zone right now where uh, there's, there's still people doing some of the tasks, but they're using artificial intelligence. But what's happening really is artificial intelligence is using them to learn. Yeah. And eventually those people are going to get completely replaced. So oh. those sales reps who are, because there's tools right now out there. So for, I'll give you an example. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been training, uh, the, the, this stuff for about 10 years now. And, I've, and, and I'm, a, I'm a sales rep that happen, happens to train, right? Because I still sell every day. And one of the things that I train, and I took this training, is called the Basho email or the why you, why you now email. And, and like five or six years ago, this is pretty much what the training was, is I taught kids how to go online, go on somebody's website, find some trigger, you know, write a very personalized email, fire it off to an executive, get a referral down. And you were getting like five, six years ago, if you did it right, you were getting about a 15 to 20% response rate on that. Right? Yeah. So, and it was great. Uh, but now with all the noise and all that other stuff and, and with all the artificial intelligence, I had a couple of kids who I trained at Salesforce, right? And they left Salesforce and they called me up and say, Hey John, we created this artificial intelligence bot to write super highly personalized emails at a fraction of the time it takes sales reps. And I'm like, come on guys, like how good can this be? Right. <laughs> right. So I said, send me an, send me an example. The example that they sent to me, I was like, Holy shit. Like oh, it no. was more personalized than, I mean, I've been training this stuff for 10 years. I don't think I could have written a better email than this. And it took oh. 70 seconds. It was a Gmail plugin and it took 70 seconds. And I'm sitting there going, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. right. And, and so that's happening on the email side. And so I actually wrote a blog post a little while ago called, Hey, the phone's going to make a raging comeback because I don't think any of us are going to trust a single email that's in our inbox in the next couple of years because of that artificial intelligence and the ability for it to do it. So I'm like, hey, phone is the one thing, right? So we still got that. We have empathy. We can connect, that type of thing. But I don't know if you saw recently. Did you see the uh, Google? Uh, I did. Call and the, where, it, where it, it made a phone call to make an app hair appointment for someone? That one? And, and, yeah. and, that, and then did you hear the ch how it ordered Chinese food? I didn't hear the Chinese. Well, how did that one go? It was another one that where it ordered Chinese food and the, and the person who picked up the phone at the Chinese restaurant, like could barely speak English, barely speak English. And Google, the Google voice thing navigated that conversation. There was wow. giggles and ahas and oh, sorry's in it. And like, what? So my point is right now is that technology is coming for us, whether we like it or not. Yeah. And what, what I used to be overly freaked out about, I was like, you know what, you know, we're all screwed. We're all getting replaced. But now I've come to the conclusion is that technology and, and artificial intelligence specifically is going to make good sales reps. Great, great sales reps, incredible and average sales reps are relevant. Right. So those reps who are just cranking out those template emails, those reps who are making the generic cold calls, uh, they're, they're going to get replaced. And so companies who are yeah. looking for tools to 
I, I appreciate what they're trying to do. They're looking at a tech stack to help the sales rep be more effective. But when then they, when they then invest in that technology and then just treat the sales rep like a robot where all the sales rep is doing is pushing the button. Yeah. They're, I, I'm, I'm worried for the sales rep and for the company because now they're, they're kind of wasting their money because you, you, you kind of either need one or the other if that's the approach you're going to take. Right. Now, if you're going to leverage technology so that the sales rep can be more effective and, and take the information that artificial intelligence gives and then put some context around it, that to me is where, so where the great sales reps are going to be in the future. And, and to me, and I, w I know we might be getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here, but sure. to me, that's the connective tissue between sales and marketing is context versus content. Interesting. And, and, and I stole this from Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, so I'm going <laughs> to give him credit. Up, Gary? <laughs> right? Um, he, talks, he said this a while back. He said, look, content is, everybody talks about content is king, content is king, content is king. He goes, fine. If content is king, then context is God. <laughs> right. And that to me is marketing versus sales. Marketing is content. Sales is context. If we as sales professionals are not putting any context around the content that marketing is developing, we're no different than marketing. And I have no idea why we're getting paid to do what we do. Right. Right. So, now it's interesting because on the marketing side, we're always trying to, well, we should be trying to, it's almost like we have the same challenge because we, I, I was at a company, um, uh, a few mo moons ago where they had hired this attorney. He was like a thousand dollars an hour to write this white paper. It was like 27 pages. Mm -hmm. The guy made bank on this thing. And I asked him, well, what, what did this solve? Like what question did this address for your buyer? And you know, like, tell me and all their heads went down got quiet, got awkward, you know, yeah. it, it, there was no reason. They realized this was completely useless. We spent a lot of money. So the, the budgets of some companies, entire marketing budget for a year on this one white paper that answers nothing. So, I mean, that would be the negative side of content without context. Yeah. But yeah. to your point, you know, I mean, sales is ne necessary and is there to be able to craft those special messages, or at least until AI takes us all over. Mm -hmm. um, but, but at the same time, you know, marketing can be capturing information to try to twist it but maybe not to the extent that sales can or or do you just do you just well, see, you know print shop on the sales side and a uh, marketing side and then sales swoops into no i mean i think well obviously i think a lot of again context of this discussion it depends on what you're selling who you're selling to and totally. you know all that stuff totally. right yeah. so so i think it's it's marketing's job to obviously nurture brand awareness, those type of things, and also to surface information that sales reps can use to make the human connection with it, right? right? But why is it important to you specifically? Because marketing can do targeted stuff to an audience of a bunch of directors of IT or those type of things, and that's where marketing scale is important. Yeah. And, and that's why, I, again, I don't need a sales rep to do that. I need a sales rep to take that, the, the pieces of content that marketing creates and put them together into a story to you specifically, and then tell you why we should have this conversation. It's kind of mm -hmm. like people, it's like social selling these days. You know, people talk about, um, you know, a lot of kids ask me, hey, John, you know, should I, should I be creating a blog? Should I be writing a, you know, you know should I be doing video? Should yeah, maybe, maybe not. Like, but, but you don't need to be the content creator these days. Mm. You need to be the content curator in the sense that there's so much information out there, right? Look, and it, don't get me wrong. If you want to write a blog, if, you, if you're good on video and you want to do a vlog, those type of things, by all means, I recommend you do it. It helps you build your brand as long as there's value there, no problem. But a better way to look at it is, as a sales rep specifically, is what I want to be doing is I want to be researching and understanding what trends are going on there in the marketplace, what's going on with my customer base and, you know, what personas are challenged and that type of stuff and reading and, and, and consuming that intel and then distilling it down to the stuff that's most relevant to my audience and then putting my context around it. So for instance, um, another thing, you know, I, I wrote a blog post on this one called let marketing market and let sales sell. Mm. My point was this, it, and for all those marketing, uh, marketing, directors or VPs or CMOs working out there, I, I beg you, beg you, take, when you send your marketing emails out, please don't send them from the sales rep. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like it makes sense, right? Oh, John, 
John Barrows, John Barrows, look at John Barrows is sending you a bunch of emails that please don't do that because that is, it is blatantly obvious to me when I get a marketing email. I have to right click on it to show images. There's cookies in there. I can tell, you know, it, marketing language is different than sales language. It just is. And again, I come from a marketing background. There's marketing messaging and there's sales messaging. Sure. And, and, and for, for a sales rep, so say you, Casey, say you're on my marketing list, right? Yeah. And you get a whole bunch of emails from John Barrows when it's blatantly obvious it's from the marketing department, right? So you get 10, 15, 20 emails me over the course of like a couple, three months, something like that. Yeah, this guy's I, an asshole. Stop spamming me, John Barrows. Well, and then I decide, <laughs> you know what? I decide, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on Casey's website. I'm going to read a blog of his. I'm going to listen to one of these podcasts here. I'm going to fire him off an email and be like, hey, Casey, you know what? I was actually watching your last podcast and that picture that you have in that background, that artist picture, man, I got the same one up there. We got a similar taste and shit here, man. Yeah. Da -da -da -da, and I would love to talk to you about it. When I send you that email, I'm probably already in the spam folder. Totally. So it, look, if you wanted to come from your CMO, your CEO, those type of things, by all means. And the other recommendation I have on this is make sure your sales rep is on the marketing list that, that goes out to their clients on those marketing emails. So as an example, marketing sends out their webinar emails to my territory. So I got my territory. Right. Marketing is just hammering my territory with marketing. <laughs> Put your sales rep on that list because me as a sales rep, what I want to do is I want to get that email, okay? And then I want to go after a couple of select clients and put my context around it to say, hey, Casey, I know you, pro I'm not sure if you saw the recent email that went out from our marketing department, yeah, but we have this awesome webinar coming up where it's where Casey and John are going to be talking about that sales alignment and those type of things. And the reason I think you specifically would be interested in this is because your background is very similar to John's and he's actually coming from this perspective and he really talks about some fire stuff here. So here you go. Now, that's like when a, if a sales rep were to, that's what the sales rep's job is, right? Right. And, and then after the, here's another example, it's context content. After the webinar, right? Look, I sign up for hundreds of webinars. I don't go to, I don't attend any of them. Yeah, I missed you one yesterday. <laughs> you know why? You know why I don't attend them is because I know right after that webinar, I'm going to get the yeah. marketing email. Sorry, you missed the webinar. Here's the link to it, right? Yeah, he's recording. Yeah. Whatever. Watch it on your own time. Yeah, watch out. So that, and then it goes in my things to read folder and I never look at it again. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes, but, yeah. yeah. Right? But, but if a rep, if, if I can, here's marketing and sales alignment. If we promote the webinar, I then take that marketing email for Hey, Casey, I think you should go to this, right? We go, then we, the, the webinar happens and then marketing tells me, Hey, John, Casey didn't show up to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then what I do I hopefully listen to the webinar as a sales rep. Then I take an email, the, the, the email with the link, and I send it to you. And I say, hey, Casey, uh, I noticed you signed up for the webinar, but I, I noticed you didn't attend it, um, which is cool. Um, that said, based on what I know about you, if you actually start listening to the webinar around minute 15 and go from minute 15 to 35, like that's really where they start talking about some really core stuff, you know, that I think, and, and some execution things that I think you might get a lot of value out of. Right. If a sales rep would ever do that to me, I would, I would immediately start looking at them differently. And that is that sales rep sit, sit and marketing team collaboration where it right. works. Marketing promotes, sales puts context of why you should, company miss, person misses it, sales rep then takes the follow-up email, flips it back to you, puts some context of why. Now we're working together. That, you know, that that is an awesome picture and i and i could see that working so well and that kind of context because almost 80 percent of that story i was like yeah marketing can do that but then when you got to that you know minute 15 uh, this is th i you know based on our, our quick combos or what i know about you this is where you need to start because i see that on youtube all the time like hey start it you know yes. four to see the crazy crash or something yep. start it for you know or minute 15 to hear the that's really cool. And I can see how that cuts through all the noise we're trying to get through. And that's not something that marketing can do or, sh or should be doing. No. Um, but I, you know what? It's interesting. I, I, it's almost like, you know, I also had that, you know, the, but I, I did like marketing forever. Then I got into sales. It was so much fun. I was like, in a, I was like misbehaving. You know, I was like yeah. on hooky from, from marketing. Yeah. But it's, it's, right with the dark side. When you experience both sides, you just really appreciate it. And you almost take for granted that, you know, some techniques from one can be used over here and from one can be used over there. You mentioned that email and so many times when we do trainings and set up with Pardot, we're talking to people about, 
look, you can send personalized emails. You can have it even come from the, the contact owner, the account owner, anybody. All this magic can happen. But the problem is exactly what you described. People then go, okay, cool. Let me send my standard business email with mar marketing bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, and the standard, to your point, the marketing language. I mean, you say it and I kind of cringe, but it's true. It's like marketing sounds the same. Everything's in caps or, you know, everything's capitalized. And so it's like marketing. Plus, bingo. Thursday. Transparency and, and synergy and yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like world-class leading. And, and so, leading provider yeah. remote. So we've been trying to coach people to not do that. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to your point, we need to collaborate more so that we're not trying to do the other person's job. Just like sales isn't trying to then do the marketer's job. It's almost like, and I, I wrote this little curve where marketing was like too much, too much. Okay. Ratcheting it back, getting more personal, getting more individual like ABM and all that stuff, which we've been doing for a while anyways, but ratchet it back. And then sales is like, Ooh, we need more activity. Marketing's not doing activity anymore. So we're going to do it. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, to your point, hopefully that starts trailing back as well. Well, and I, there's another factor on that too. And I think it's a generational thing uh, and because I think we're in a spot, we're in a weird spot right now. Um, we're in a transition phase At, right now. We are in a transition phase and it's because of the Gen Xers. <laughs> so, which is, which we are the transition generation, if you will, too. So what, what happened is when, when are those the people right before the craziness happens? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, well, the, the thing with this is look, I, um, you know, I, when I grew up in sales specifically, it was, here's your territory, here's your quote up, go. Right. And, and it was full blown reco style, like make 50, hundred dials a day, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, and it was a volume game because that's what we knew. We knew the equation. It took X amount of dollars to get X amount of, like, you know, marketing has now taken over that equation. How many emails to get, how many click throughs to get, how many impressions, whatever. Right. Right. Sales that used to be the, the straight up. That was the only way. So we just stuffed it down people's throat, make more dials, make more phone calls, you know, that type of thing. And so that's how I grew up. Okay. Right. Now as a manager, everybody like now with where we are, I think everybody understands that quality is the answer, but we're now st still stuck in the world of, yeah, but it makes me uncomfortable as a 42 year old VP of sales, walking through a sales inside sales organization and not hearing anything. Like right. I literally feel, I, right. and I talk to VPs of sales all the time about this. They're like, the floor is silent. And it's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just, but it's in the back back of our heads, like, wait a minute, a sales floor should be loud and it should be phones and, and that type of thing. Right. So I'm not a good sales manager and I don't know how to coach you well enough, right? What's one thing that I can hold my hat on and make sure that I can get you to do? Numbers, right? Yeah. And so you can track I, it in Salesforce, right? I mean, I can it's, track it, right? Yeah. So now, uh, make more calls. You're not hitting your number, make more calls, make more calls. So, so these reps are in this yeah. world where yeah, account-based marketing, we get it, and quality, and those type of things, but I'm being asked to make 100 dials a day. So what do I do here? So I think as the, the, gen, as the millennials come up and take over decision makers, right? Because right now the, yeah, the, yeah. Gen, uh, the Gen Xers, are, we're kind of in the decision-making like sweet spot, right? right? Yep. As millennials start to take over those decision-making, and, you know, it, it's going to be more social interaction, engagement, uh, that, type, that type of stuff than pure numbers type of thing. So we're in this transition phase. I think it's a big fault of, of our generation for no other reason than that's how we grew up. Right. Uh, and that's the easiest thing that I can manage towards. Yep. But it's the, the reckoning's coming. You know what I mean? Like the reckoning's coming. Um, you're, you're getting into. That's why you start to see stuff like drift and those type of things start to take off. Where they're changing the game, the chatbot stuff. As far as yeah. instead of now landing and marketing has to pay attention to this, right? Because instead of the landing pages, fill out this form, HubSpot, you know, go through that whole crap. Yeah. Now it's you're on somebody's website, little chatbot comes up. You have a little conversation with somebody or an, you know things that brings you down this way, educate you or whatever it is, and then all of a sudden, bing. Okay, now we've got no point where you need to talk to somebody. Now go talk to somebody. Right. You know, yeah. Um, it's so the generational thing. It's interesting. And as you're describing the challenge that sales is having, it's crazy. Marketing has the same thing because 
you go to these conferences, you know, you go see you at Dreamforce, some other people. It's like, hey, it's quality. Got, you know, let's, let's, or here, here, Sangram. Hey, let's, let's focus ABM and yep. then you go back to your business. And the head of sales or the CEO is saying, like, where are the freaking leads? Well, you know, leads? I need, I need 800 leads, you know, by the end of the quarter. Yep. Um, it doesn't even, we didn't even say quality. We just said 800. So you're like, yep. well, you asked, so I'm going to send you the shitty leads and that, and it kind of perpetuates that same, well, your leads are crap. And then it's like, well, you asked, and, you know, so yeah, it's, it's just interesting. Both groups are, can face those old school pressures of dialing for dollars. Yeah. It's uh, and look, like I said, I, I think, you know, it, again, everything comes back to that ICP and the personas and everything else, because at the end of the day, if you're, if your ideal customer, pro, if your ACV, you know, contract values is, a thousand bucks. You don't need sales, <laughs> right? You don't. Right. You don't need sales it's first. transactional. It's it's Just expensive. Blast out it's a shitload of template emails. Try to get the volume game going. Go right. for it. It's but like selling shoes or coach purses or something. Yeah. Whatever. Right. Or just, yeah. you know, the widget thing, the thing that you can buy a couple of license of and play with it on your own, that type of stuff, whatever. Yeah. But if you're going mid-market and enterprise, that's where like a ABM, like people talk about, oh, well, account based marketing, that's the way everything should go. No, 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 no. For, for, a, for enterprise. Yep. Absolutely. For mid market mm, kind of SMB. Absolutely not. You know what I mean? So the volume game still does have a place. There's no question it has a place. Um, but it's getting, but, but what's happening right now is that, that volume game technology is now doing it better and better and better and better. And it's creeping further and further and further up. So there's tools right now that are like, uh, there's companies called like outbound works and, uh, and Nova.ai where they're actually saying, Hey, if you're one SDR, you could do the work of 15 and we can do personalized messaging because it leverages AI to point at your accounts. And then your job wow. as an SDR is to crank these things out, but scrub them, like take two seconds just to double check that there's there, but it yeah. adds the personalization into it. And then the sales rep is then the one who uses that tool to then start to send out. And it's actually more customized than reps who are at the bottom level, just cranking out template cadences. So basically for instance, outbound works, uh, Ben Sardelli is a good friend of mine over there. Um, what they're saying is like, you don't need the SMB SDR team. You just don't need them because our tool can send mass personalized emails to your mass audience for the SMB side of the house, you know, graduate your SDRs to the, to the mid market and the enterprise, but don't, don't have, a, don't have kids making cult. Don't pay a kid 50, 60, 70, 80 grand a year, you know, 70,000, 80,000 OTE to blast out template emails and make cold calls. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Right. How do you approach the lead quality quantity. Now I, I'm saying lead cause I'm sending you a bunch, but sure. maybe you have a list or maybe you've got a, a database. I mean, it's some sort sure. of qualification here. Cause it would be helpful to know how you look at that because you know, ideally in the marketing side, I, I keep telling people like, look, you're, you're a customer too. It's like, I want to get you a, a lead or someone who's interested that actually wants to talk to you and you want to talk to them. It's what you asked for. So, I mean, how do you approach, you know, rectifying, I need a certain number of people as well as I need, need to you know let's fill that pipeline sure. so it actually is funny because when you were saying earlier about how you're walking people through the process right yeah. uh, you know mapping that out it's the exact same thing on the sales side of the house so funny, you know, funny how that is <laughs> right and, it, and the difference between what you and i are talking about is so minuscule uh, because for instance what i talk about was so the first step is that ideal customer profile is to really hone in and don't just do the basic shit. Like, you know, so, like what people do with ICP is they go to zoom info and they say, I want to see all companies between X and Y number of employees. And in these five industries, and, mm -hmm. and those are the, really the two main factors of those two pieces, right? Number of people, maybe revenue and industries. Right. And that is such basic demographic info, right? So what I try to get reps to do is really think through what are the nuanced stuff about your ICP? What technologies does, do, does your, like, cause there are certain technologies as an example, uh, that if they're using those technologies, that means a really good thing for me, right? So like, yeah. for instance, if you're using any one of the sales automation tools or the sales efficiency tools, out, uh, outreach, sales, loft, those type of things, that actually, I, I, that's something really good for me cause I can show you how to use those right, okay? Right. Um, uh, who's the competition in there? 
Because there's certain competitors that are great, you know, we have a great story to tell it. There's others that are like shit, you know, um, you know, how many locations do they have? What's their, who yeah. do they sell to? Those type of things. So like that nuanced stuff. So that first and foremost is where we start because then you can really seg out, segment out your tier ones, tier twos, and tier threes. Okay. That's tier me, right? So you yeah. tear them out, quality, and, and therefore and that is now your approach because Tier one's are your quality approach, tier two's are your quantity approach, and tier three's are practice. So tier ones, I always recommend everybody have a list of top 25. And those are the ones you put on Sales Navigator, Owler, you know, those type of tools out there to listen for the triggers, to kind of pick up on them. Right. Those are the ones you spend time on the website sending personalized emails to, that type of stuff. The tier twos, those aren't, you know, I'm not going to blast out a million emails to them, but I'm going to be targeted because quality, quanti uh, tier one, tier two, tier three, quality, quantity, practice, tailored, targeted, templated. Tailored to the tier ones. Huh. Those are the ones that you should go after with thoughtful, whatever. Tier twos, targeted. I want to be able to run a list. This is why the nuances of the ICP are so important, right? Because I want to be able to run a list of, of uh, I want to be able to go into Salesforce, which is my CRM, right? Yep. And I want to be able to say, you know what? I want to see every VP of sales in the SaaS industry that uses Salesforce. Yeah. Under yeah. 20, under 25 million. Okay. That might only be a list of 30 or 40 people. Okay. But that fits a very specific profile, right? Yeah. Because my value to a VP of sales in the SaaS industry that uses Salesforce is different than my value is to a VP of sales in the manufacturing industry that uses Microsoft dynamics. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, slightly, but a little bit. Same so, here. Yeah. And I can tell a story to these people that's different than my story is to these people. So now I sit down with VPs of sales, assassins, and use Salesforce. I come up with five, six, seven different uh, approaches and in, in, in messaging to speak to them and tell my story to them. Like, what's my contact strategy, right? And by the way, for those listening, I really recommend you develop your contact strategy all at the same time so you can tell your story as opposed to sending one email, scheduling another activity, and then trying to figure out what you're going to say then. Yeah. If you put it all together, it makes it easy. So now I come up with five, six, seven different things to say to VPs of sales and SaaS industry, and then I throw it into a cadence. And, I let, and then I send out 50 or 60 emails, and I make 50 or 60 phone calls to the same persona. And that's how I can get my volume up there. And then the tier threes, I used to throw my tier threes away. I'd say, look, you're bad customers anyways. I want, no I want nothing to do with you. But now I love my tier threes because now I use them to practice. Yep. Right. Anytime I'm trying something new, I run a list of my tier threes. I throw up all over myself. Who cares? You know, <laughs> right. Right. You never know. Sometimes you get the best results from that, right? Like, totally, right? yeah, got it. So tailored, targeted, templated. Yep. Very cool. You know what's interesting? It, you, I mean, you said this too just now, the idea of when I hear doing good sales, when I hear doing sales right, I hear also hear doing marketing right. You know, it would just uh, slight differences of maybe the actions we're taking. Yep. Maybe in marketing, we're not calling the person directly. Right. Um, but you're but, serving up the right, the yeah. right piece of content at the right time. Like marketing done right is – you know, in a lot of ways, you know, what you see it on Facebook, right? With Facebook retargeting. It's yeah. when I like when I go and do a Google search on something because I'm kind of curious about whatever it is. And then all of a sudden I log into Facebook and there's an ad that <laughs> pops up that is something that's based on like, you know, that yeah. type of thing. Like that in some cases it's super annoying, but but in other cases, like I there's times where, or, you know, you know, this thing's listening to us, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, that. like to, to me, I'll be talking, you and I will be talking about, like, I'll be shocked by the way, that painting that's in your back. Yeah. I'll be shocked if that doesn't show up on my feed after, after you and I get off this phone. Icon it's iconic too, right? So well, right, did you get it from iconic? What's that? Did you get the painting from Iconic too? Or? Uh, I don't know. My wife got it for me for Father's Day last year. So That's how I found it. It was on Facebook. It was in my feed. And I liked probably some other thing and eventually it came up. But that would be super creepy cool if it, if it showed up later on today in Facebook. And that's my point though. It's like that's to me marketing done right because they're serving up a that. message. <laughs> they're serving up a message oh, <laughs> based on what I searched for, what I was kind of interested in. And it's yeah. not like in my face, like buy this, buy now, buy now. It's just right there. It's like, wait a minute. Like, yeah. Same thing with, with marketing messaging, right? Like right. I just got out of um, – so uh, I just trained this morning. That's why I was almost late. And so I said to that email, but there was a company called. Trained uh, or trained? Like you wrote a train? 
No, no, no. I, I, I trained a, a team of, uh, uh, of, uh, oh, sales. that kind of training. Hey, yeah, yeah. no, no, not, not lifting. No. Uh, but, uh, I, I did some sales training for a company called tech target. And what they do is they are very hyper-focused on the, uh, on a very specific industry tech and they serve up, uh, buyer intent. So it's not just, Hey, they clicked on this, downloaded this white paper. It actually starts with the Google search. It's like, Hey, this person searched for this term and then they followed this track and then they did this and then they did that. Oh, and by the way, now here's their digital footprint on not just your website on the internet. Here's their digital footprint. And so now let me serve you up a bunch of leads of clients who are actively looking for what you sell. Now that comes to the sales rep and now I make a phone call to say, Hey Casey, what's going on? We work with a lot of companies who are looking for these type of things. And I'd like to have that conversation with you. And it's like, Whoa, wait a minute. Like that's awfully convenient. You know what right. I mean? Right. That's when it's done right. You, you know, when you were describing Google, you know, or Facebook randomly showing us stuff in the feed, I was thinking that's like, that's computer context, right? That, that's as if the computer is being the sales rep saying, I heard you chatting on the subway about some, by the way, here's, here's that thing you were looking for, you know, and, and it wasn't a personal conversation, but it was more subtle. It was sort of showing you something. Um, but then you brought up intent. Intent is so, it's magical. It's awesome. Yeah. And a lot of times in marketing, we're, we're seeing the difference. Oh, ideally, you're seeing the difference be between like a display ad right. where oftentimes there isn't intent. Maybe it's just blanket targeting you, unless it's this retargeting here, but it's just right. sort of like showing up. It's interrupting your day. It's in a magazine ad or something. Whereas the intent, which is why Google's like bajillionaires now, uh, is because they're people are searching for something. They have the intent to find something. And it's so much more powerful than trying to get them to find it. Hey, you don't know that the sky is falling, but it is. So go look for a solution as opposed to, I need to find a solution. You know, it's, that's magical that, so combining those two, that's like a superpower. Well, and that's it. And I, and I think that, you know, the, the shift has to be for us in sales and marketing and marketing has been there for a while, but sales needs to get it is that we're no longer in a kind of the one call close approach where you could cold call somebody and be like, what's up? You, you've never heard of me before. Buy this shit and sign up. Right. Wolf of wall street stuff is so, you know, far gone. It's ridiculous. It's a movie, so are they all, they're all bullshit. Yeah. Total bullshit. Like that's <laughs> why actually when you ask me my favorite sales movie and people say, Oh, Wolf of wall street, boiler room and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah. We're Worst sales movies I've ever seen in my life. Worst sales movies. I mean, they're great movies. They're fun movies. Don't they are fun. <laughs> apparently, I, apparently, I have to go find myself some lewds because those things look fantastic. But, but <laughs> when it comes to, like, but when it comes to that, like that is everything that's wrong about selling. Literally yeah. everything that's wrong about selling, and that's the perception when somebody says, "Hey, I'm in sales." The immediate perception is used car salesman, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, Wolf of yeah. Wall Street, douchey sales guy, stuffing down some your throat. That's literally everything that's wrong about selling. Now, if you want to go watch awesome sales movies, um, yeah, one of them is, is Pursuit of Happiness, one of the best sales movies I've ever seen in my life, because um, it talks about, like talk about hard work, right? right? But one of my other, what my absolute favorite is uh, is Tommy Boy. Yeah, Tommy Boy is hands down the best sales movie you'll ever watch in your life because I call it. There's a point where um, I call it catching your sales groove. Okay, and this comes into context content. And it's the point where a sales rep wakes up one day and stops, you know, they stop pitching their solutions and they start having conversations about their solutions. Yeah. They start caring more about what the client needs than they do about their commission checks. And oddly enough, that's where their commission checks go through the roof, right? And, and there's a beautiful scene in Tommy Boy where he catches his sales groove. I don't know if you remember it, but it's when he goes, Helen, you look like a Helen. Let me tell you why I suck as a salesman. Say I go into some guy's <laughs> office, say he's in remotely interested in buying something from me. Well, I don't get all excited. I'm like, Jojo, the Indian circus boy, the pretty pet, right? And he goes through this whole ridiculous thing and the waitress is like, wow, dude, you're twisted. Let me go fire up the wings for you. And he's like, oh, tell me like you, tell me what wing you, right? And in that moment, <laughs> right? In that moment, he was being himself, yeah. right? I mean, as weird as it was, he was being himself. And if you remember before that moment, he was trying to be like his dad. Right. He was, uh, you can stick your head up a butcher's ass, but no, that's not the way right. you, I don't know. And he was pitching. So in that moment he stopped pitching and having a, and then he saves the day. Right. And that's the difference between sales and marketing. What he was doing before that was marketing. 
He was pitching. Like, the, and, and this is what drives context content is an example. We stuff it down sales reps throat to do the presentation, right? So, so when they come on board, they do boot camp and all this other stuff. And we're like, all right, memorize the deck, memorize the deck. You need to get certified. Here's your badge. Like, good for you. Right. But if the sales rep then doesn't take that demo and make it their own, what's the fucking difference between that and marketing? Like I actually, as a former marketer, if all you're going to do, bad marketing. <laughs> all, if all you're going to do, cause most sales reps demos, I can't stand demos. Cause every single demo is exactly the same. Well, John, thanks for your time today. Is this still a good time? Okay. I have a 30 minute <laughs> demo that I'd like to go through with you today. If you have any questions as we go through it, just let me know. Okay. And then they go, and then they play, right. And they, then they pause intermittently going, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? And then, you know, and then they wind up and then the client says, yeah, you know, interesting. Why don't you send me some information? Uh, if that's what a sales rep's going to do with a demo, why do I need a sales rep? As a right. marketer, as a marketer, I can actually create a better, more engaging presentation than a sales rep ever could if they're doing that, because I can go on with click throughs and avatars and then have you click on this journey instead of that journey. And then I can analyze the data. And when you click on that, I actually serve you this content. Yeah. And then from a follow-up standpoint, I give you exactly the stuff that you spent the most time on whatever slides, right? That type of thing. Why do I need a sales rep if I can do it better than that? Sales reps should sit there and say, hey, you know what, Casey, I got about a 30 minute demo usually that I go through here. Um, I'm going to spend the first 10 to 15 minutes talking to you about what, what you really want to get out of this and help me understand what, you're, what are your priorities and where you're trying to go with this. Because right. I'd really rather cut that 30 minutes down to probably the 10 or 15 that's most relevant to you. Right. And I've seen that. I mean, the best ones do that. And, and then the person just flat out tells you, yeah, I just want to see ROI reporting and how easy it to, is it to send an email out. And like, great, let's show you that stuff. You know, I, I wrote a blog post. A while time. Ago. Yeah. I wrote a blog post a little while ago called sell to the 20%, which is my fundamental belief, which is that, that pick any product or service you own. Okay. Uh, I almost guarantee you only use about 10 to 20% of the functionality, whatever that product or service is. Totally. Your iPhone. You know, this thing has more power than we used to send somebody to the moon for. I know. Out, right? But but most people just check their emails and tweet and Snapchat and text and whatever. Uh, Excel. Excel is an insanely powerful tool if you know how to use it. That's true. Ninety nine percent of the world adds some. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Average. Done. Your world. Your world. Yeah. Hard on Marketo. All that stuff. Totally. Most people sign up for it. Use this much of the functionality. And then like, oh, why should I renew? We're not using it. Right. You're not using it. Salesforce. That's, that's what gets to me, man. I hate that. I hate seeing that. It's like there's so, there's so many things, but they don't know what, there's no roadmap. They don't know what to do. And then they just, they just default to the easiest 20%, you know? Yeah. And, and, and my point here is because most people only use 10 to 20% of what they buy, that's how I believe people buy. They only buy yeah. 10 to 20% of what we're, we're selling them. Right. So as a sales rep, my job is to take this conversation and understand what that 20% is and then craft all that content that marketing gives me into a package that is going to speak to that. Right. That's context content. And, and that kind of a presentation, that's not something that we need to be trying to automate, Ooh. right? You don't need to be create some crazy, crazy app. That's perfect functionality for sales. Yep. You know, get them that get them that in, introduction, get them that in, that interview or that call, if you can, or they get it. But then let them, you know, go ahead and customize it. You know, the the worst thing I see happen is when um, reps outsource the demos, or they it's like they they outsource the the functionality or the knowledge of, of the app or the whatever it is, you know, who, whatever they're selling, and they they have some other person come in who has no understanding of the context. No. And so yeah. they, they have nothing to do, but just go ahead and now the, the better ones, the better, you know, SEs, they'll just say, hey, tell, tell me a little bit more about what's going on. Or they'll, they'll get some research ahead of time. But yeah, man, it, it's like almost, it's a joke. Everyone checks out on, on long-term demos, like an hour, they, they book an hour and a half in your calendar. You want to shoot yourself, you know? When I hear, uh, <laughs> when I hear anything more than a 15 minute demo, I mean, unless it is the most complex product I've ever seen in my life, as part of the sales pitch, if I hear yeah. anything longer than a 10 to 15 minute demo, I, I immediately, I know, absolutely, you know what I mean? And by the way, right. the people that are willing to sit through hour and a half long demos are not the people that are buying your shit. <laughs> they're, they're not decision makers. There's not yeah. a single decision maker I know that is, that, that is willing to sit through an hour and a half long demo. Not one. 
Now, a bunch of non-decision makers and evaluators and that type of stuff, sure, fine. But it's really just to check off the box so that they can say yes or no, but there's somebody else. So like if you're giving, if somebody is willing to sit through an hour long demo, I'd be curious and, and cautious about that person being somebody that I, probably I'm not really selling to. Right. Uh, I wonder though, are, are they just trying to you build value or set landmines or? Oh man, they're going like, through no, the no, I'm sorry. Like, Fuck well, it. No. Hey, they might not buy from me. They want a discount. So I'm just going to, I'm going to make this so long that the people are bewildered no. with the amount of content that it must be powerful. It must be expensive and full of value. No? Demos are the laziest way of selling I've come across, especially unqualified demos, because what they're saying there is that I don't matter as a sales rep. All you have to do is look at my stuff and you're going to buy it. And, and so it's literally the, uh, the laziest way is one of the laziest unqualified demos is the laziest yeah. qualified demos. Let's spend the first 10 minutes talking 15, 20 minutes and let me customize this demo to you. Those are great, but unqualified, let me just crank out these demos. Oh, I did a good job because I got through all 30 slides. That is the a lazy ass way of selling. And it's a sales rep going through the motions yeah. because they're doing what they're told to do. Right. And again, I wrote another post on this one, which is stop doing what you're supposed to do. We're supposed to do the demo for 30 minutes. We're supposed to get our badge in this shit. Right. Just have, you know, put, stop for a second and ask yourself, do you want to sit through this demo? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. would you be listening at this point? And, and, and put some hum, hum, humanity into the process. Right? Because if not, those, those reps that are going through those demos and flooding you with information and whatever it is, those are the ones that are absolutely, there's, that reckoning is coming and there's going to be a huge flush out. And, and maybe those sales reps aren't going to be eliminated, but guess what? Instead of sales and getting paid commissions, they're going to get pushed over to marketing and get paid salaries. Right, right. Yeah, it's like authentic conversations with context if there's intent, even better. Yep. This is awesome, man. I, I know you got to bounce soon. So um, and we could literally have part two and three. We haven't even gotten to your childhood and, and <laughs> psychoanalyzing what's made you you. So I have to have you come back on here. But, you know, throw out some links. You know, where can people find out more about you and, you know, even you know, sign up for some training too and all those kind of things. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I try to, you know, I, I try to do the marketing thing and the sales thing, right? So, <laughs> so if you go to my, like my website has it, has it all, right? So if you go to yeah. jmeros.com, um, I got, I have a resource library there that has 150 pieces of content, you know, landing pages, the whole thing, HubSpot. Um, but it's all, most of it's free. Um, so I, I'd say about 80 to 90% of what I put out there is free tips, nuggets, videos, blog posts, that type of thing. Um, we have a Facebook group where there's a huge engagement where a lot of people have gone through. So if you go to Facebook slash Jay Barrows, it's on there and there's a make it happen group that you can join there where I, where I moderate it and answer questions. Um, and then all the social stuff, you know what I mean? Like you can hit me up on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, my, my handle on all those is John M as in Michael Barrows, all one word, no spaces. Um, yeah, man. And I'm, you know, I'm just trying to, my whole philosophy on, on sales is this, is that because it is such an uneducated profession and that, like it's kind of the default profession, right? Is that when you come across something that works, like you, I think it's, it's important for us as sales professionals to, to share what works so yeah, that we yeah. can elevate the profession to the point where the, the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross shit is, is a thing of the past. Right. And I, that's what I took. I took this training when I was a VP of sales at my first startup company, um, I, I did the Sandler, Miller, Hyman, Taz, all those, all those sales trainings. And I came across this company called Basho and it was the first training that I sat and I was like, you know what? I, I don't like this. Right. And so I used it to help my, grow my company up. We ended up selling it off to Staples. And then I was looking for another position and, and Basho said, Hey, John, you want to be a trainer? And I didn't really want to be a trainer because I, I, up until that point in my career, I'd never really come across any trainers that I'd liked. You know, most trainers are either failed sales professionals or professional presenters. Well, the whole thing, if you can't do it, you train it. <laughs> so, so for me, I was like, no, I don't, my passion is sales, right? And they said, well, don't you worry. You have to use these techniques to sell so you can train so you can get paid. So I was like, all right, I like that. And so when I joined them, um, I started delivering, coming on, bringing on some bigger accounts, that type of thing. And then to make a long story short, they screwed it all up and I took it over and went off on my own. But the point is, is that, you know, I'm learning every day. Like yeah, the, yeah. one of the things I love about being in the SaaS world specifically and those customers that you mentioned, Salesforce, LinkedIn, Box, Dropbox, like Google, like I train all those companies. I love being in this space for two reasons. One is SaaS tends to push the envelope from a tech standpoint. 
So uh, like I'm constantly being exposed to the newer, cooler technologies. Totally. So it pushes the envelope from a sales standpoint. Like for me, if I'm training Salesforce on the same stuff I was training them on two or three years ago, they're not renewing my contract. Right. So they force me to stay up to date and, and learn about the new techniques, the new technologies. And don't get me wrong, fundamentals in sales, a lot of the fundamentals have not changed and they will not change. That's that science, okay? Right. But how we engage and the tools that we use and the resources that we have, that to me is the stuff we got to figure out here so that we don't get replaced by marketing. Because marketing, for those sales reps out there, marketing's coming for us. And artificial <laughs> intelligence is part of marketing. Totally. So I get, and I get why. I understand sales reps are high, high you know, paid resources and you know, they're not scale, right? Mm -hmm. Marketing is scale and you can usually control the cost there. So I understand why this is happening. And, I, and don't get me wrong, I, I actually think there's a large portion of the sales population that should get pushed over into marketing and be more salary oriented type of scenario. Mm -hmm. and, but the great sales reps, the ones that can make that connection, the ones that can put context around the content, those are the ones that are going to drive this economy and everything else forward. And those are the ones I'm trying to help out to make sure that we're moving in the right direction here. And again, we're elevating this profession. So we do sales right. Cause in my opinion, just like we said earlier, when sales done right, it's the greatest profession on the planet. When done wrong, it's the worst. So I'm trying to help kids do it right. Do it right, man. Boom. Well, hey, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I know you got to bounce. Yep. I'll have to chat again later on. All right, buddy. Make it happen.